Uniting our community on 105 FM. Callan FM. Brace yourself. It's Andy Snowden. Stage and stage and stage and screen. Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. You ever seen a grown man naked? Here's Johnny. Life is a box of chocolates for us. You never know what you're gonna get. Tell me about it. Stop. Stage on Uniting our community on 105 FM. Canon FM. Right then, what can you go and see this week, I hear you ask? What's the bus? Tell me what's happening. 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 Right then, uh, following a very, very successful Christmas season up at Theatre Cluid, thanks to the awesome Aladdin, the Walk Wall Panto, and uh, the Nutcracker as well. Did anyone see the Nutcracker at Theatre Cluid? What a fantastic bit of work that was. Unbelievable. Really, really, really good. I'll, I'll tell you about it another time, but uh, Theatre Cluid have got it going on this year. I'll tell you that for nothing. Don't forget, of course, the ice rink that was uh, at the stage door. An ice rink! An ice rink was at the back. If you missed it, you missed out, I tell you. But anyway, they have uh, kicked off their spring season with a terrific production of David Hare's Skylight. Uh, This is a three-hander starring Jeannie Spark, Jay Villiers and Oscar Batterham, all given a masterclass to any young actor or actress who fancies going into this business they call show. Directed by Theatre Cluid's artistic director, Tamara Harvey, and designed by James Perkins, who, amongst other things, installed a fully working kitchen, allowing actress Jeannie Spark to cook a full spaghetti bolognese. Live on stage, right? The smell of this culinary delight engulfing the auditorium is well worth the ticket price alone. Go see it. Here is uh, Tamara Harvey speaking to David Hare about his play on Theatre Cluid's webpage. So what was the moment of inspiration for Skylight? Well, it was um, something in my life that I began to meet business people and I realised how different the attitudes between business people and uh, the culture that I came from, the arts culture. And I realised nobody writes about business and nobody writes about the world of business in the theatre because most people in the theatre know nothing about it. (laughs) And so I wanted to write a play about business. And also I'd spent my whole life not writing a play in a room because I'd written epic plays all my life with large casts. And so finally I gave in and decided that I would write a play that's more or less in real time. It's sort of uh, the interval probably is a bit shorter than the time between the two acts, but basically the rest of it's in real time. And was it, in the end, easier to write than those big epic plays? Well, look, it gets done much more, because it only has three (laughs) characters and one set. Believe it or not, it's my most popular play. Who'd have thought it? (laughs) Uh, Whereas, obviously, if I write plays with 25 people in them, there's only a very limited number of theatres in the world that can afford to do it. But there's also something more seriously touching about Skylight, which has always, from the very first performance, it was clear that it touched people in very profound ways that is often to do with their own experience because it's partly about grieving um, and the process of grieving and it's also about love affairs that have everything about that is good about them except viability (laughs) and that always attracts people. How did you feel when you sat watching that first preview of Skylight, what was it, 20 years ago? I can barely remember it. I I think what I felt principally was, um, oh, my God, I hope the actor playing Tom is going to remember his lines. That, I think, was probably... You know, but there are great virtuoso parts, and I enjoy the advantage of having seen the production in this theatre, in Run Through, which nobody else yet has, 
And it's wonderful to watch two terrific actors really put through their paces in the course of an evening. And there's a special pleasure, I think, in spending hours out there all on her own. Um, and it, 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 it's, it's a terrific show. What's the biggest challenge facing the theatre today? I think the danger is that the commercial pressure on the subsidised theatre means that plays are no longer either put on or revived for their own sake, but everything is put on with an eye to commercial viability. Um, and of course, you know, there's no reason that theatre should be pampered, but the whole point of a national theatre, the point, you know, why Granville Barker and Bernard Shaw argued for a national theatre was to make theatre a non-commercial art and to take it out and away from the pressures of commerce. I don't think anyone looking at the subsidised theatre today could say that was the state of affairs. The, uh, the, the subsidised theatre is now simply a breeding ground for the commercial theatre and something's very wrong with the relationship between the two. And finally, I read somewhere that slag was written in the back of a van in three days true? Yeah, absolutely true. I first wrote a play because a playwright for Portable Theatre failed to deliver and we only realised he was going to fail to deliver on a Wednesday and we had to have something to start um, rehearsing on the Monday. So I wrote, it's only a one act play, 60 act, 60 <laughs> minute play. It was absolutely terrible but it was the first time I thought I might be a playwright because um, obviously if you can write a play in three days you can write a better play in three weeks and an even better play in three months. So there you go, uh, Mr. David Hare speaking to the Theatre Clue and Artistic Director Tamara Harvey. You can incidentally, you can hear that whole interview on Theatre Clue's webpage right now. And uh, that's absolutely no joke, actually, when he was talking about Tom there, not uh, forgetting any of his lines. My estimation is that only Hamlet has got more lines. <laughs> And as he says, the actors are really put through their paces in this production. Uh, the character Kyra, uh, Jeannie Spark, uh, as far as I could see, she never actually leaves the acting space throughout the whole thing. Right, I popped up on Tuesday night and uh, I catch the uh, the opening night of this production. Oh, Valentine's Day it was as well. Oh, lovely. And I had a hot date with my daughter. She enjoyed every minute. And I caught a word with my uh, with Oscar Batterham. And uh, I, I, I had a quick word with him at the opening night party. Here he is, Oscar Batterham. It's fundamentally a love story about these two uh, ex-lovers who come together after having not seen each other for three years under, um, under very, and they, they parted ways in very turbulent circumstances. And it's about the, their sort of brief reunion and what happens um, over the course of one evening. Uh, and I, I played the son of the man in the relationship who, um, uh, who comes along at the beginning and at the, and the very end. Right. So I sort of bookend the play. He's much older, he's in his 50s and she's uh, just turned 30. And you had David Hare in, I, I, I see. Yeah, he was in two weeks ago, um, just uh, just for a day in rehearsals. Yeah. Right, how was that? Yeah, fascinating. It's really, really interesting having the writer in the room and you can really pick his brains about the bits that we don't kind of understand. And it was really interesting to see what he, the ideas that he has about his own play and how they how they differed from what we'd found in it and, yeah. and what he could shed light on that we completely missed and, and like, like, likewise where we, where we felt differently about about what, um, what, what we saw. And it's all done completely in real time, pretty much. More or less, yeah. 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 Uh, and there's just that one bit. Well, in, well there, are four, the... there are four scenes and there is a gap in between each one. But yeah, the whole thing takes place over the course of about 12 hours. So yeah. Okay. And it's an absolutely awesome set. It's amazing, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, James, they just breeze James our designer, has done a fantastic job. Yeah, they're essentially breeze blocks yeah. um, that are coloured and then lit. And yeah, it's yeah. gorgeous, isn't it? Oh, it's fantastic. Just, uh, just a thing about working here. Everything happens here. You rehearse here, the yeah, sets built and here. which is an amazing costume. novelty. I think I think there are very few theatres that still do that. That yeah. have their own workshop and they have their own full wardrobe teams that can just make anything on site. Mm -hmm. and there's also rehearsal rooms, and yeah, it's a real. Um, the full package is here, so it's that's why it's such an amazing building to be in because the whole, all of the creative process takes place under one roof, which I yeah. think makes a big difference um, in the in the creation of something. Because a lot of theatre in, in a bit of a mess these days. Well, I think it's it's just a shame that uh, that you don't have that as often, and that you know people have to get things imported from various corners of the country, and yeah. and uh, very few yeah producing houses have their own 
they're completely self-sufficient in that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, here, I mean, this theatre has been here years. Yeah, yeah. And I was quite shocked to hear that it was, I was, it was being threatened with closure. And then they brought Tamara in, and she's worked wonders. Absolutely, yeah. No, I she's mean, a real, literally, she's a real like, force. turned it on its head. Yeah. Really, really excellent job. How is it working with Tamara anyway? Oh, she's Great. fantastic. She's a dream. Yeah, absolutely. She's she's so. Um, She's so good with actors and so kind and and generous and sort of encouraging. Everything is positive, which yeah. is, it just makes for a lovely room to be in. Wonderful, um, wonderful. Yeah. So, what's next for you? Any anything? Any plans? Yeah, I'm going to the Manchester Exchange next with a production that, called The Suppliant Women. All right. Which is an Aeschylus play, which David Gregg has done a new version of. Um, which yes, it's been transferred to the exchange. So Fantastic! We'll have a great yeah. sound there. Yeah, no, I've never uh, been to the exchange. The it's only up the road. So yeah. I'm, I'm commuting on my Sundays now. Oh, are you? Yeah, I haven't started yet, but I will do. That, that'll be my that'll be my weekend. Wait, so you're rehearsing on a Sunday? Yeah, because it has this huge community chorus. Yeah. Um, uh, that are all Manchester locals, and they are the chorus of Suppliant Women. You know, the yeah. main event. So, uh, so, and because they're all working women and girls who go to school or whatever they have to rehearse evenings and weekends right so we the cast are going up for weekends but obviously I can only be there for the Sunday because we're going to be here yeah well so, yeah. have a great time have Thank a great you, run how long's the run for now here yeah uh, we're on until the 4th of March oh ok so a few yeah. more weeks so we've got a couple of weeks yeah yeah So there you go, Mr. Oscar Batterham. And uh, as he says, that production will be on at Theatre Cluid from now until the 4th of March. Tickets are from £10 to £25, and you can book them either online at uh, www.theatrecluid.com or indeed ring 01352 701 521. 01352 701 521. There you go. Support your local theatre, ladies and gents. It won't be there forever if you don't. Ah!